Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a fast 2D printer. But first of all, thanks for all the likes and comments on my 3D printer. And I was also surprised that almost half of my comments were about Mumbo Jumbo. And then I found out um, that he has a 2D printer challenge and I wanted to participate in it. Um, so his printer wasn't the fastest version, so I think it took about 11 minutes, 12, to print a 6x9 um, picture. And I made a fast version. Um, it's not really more compact or anything, but I really focused on speed. So I'm not really the guy that likes compacting. My focus was always on speed, like fast tree farms and so on. And I really like crunching the numbers and when a machine works as fast as possible, that's more what I enjoy doing in Minecraft. And yeah, so with the same input, put make a picture inside of the chest here. It's six by nine, so I'm gonna spell Psy for Psycraft. Let's add a second color. Yeah, that's nice. Then I just have to flick the lever, and then the machine would start printing. And I don't even need a time lapse. It takes 42 seconds after yeah, flicking the lever until the picture is finished. So you can already see the first colors are coming in. First row is already completed. Um, yeah, let's take a look what happens here. So here we have an item filter again, which is quite fast. Then the colors are selected. They just fall down, get pushed over by the slime blocks here, and they all would land in this spot right here, and then they are transported further. So let's see how far we've gotten. They're almost done. It's just a few seconds left. And yeah. Here we go, 42 seconds. I made this printer also with the ulterior motive to make my 3D printer faster and a lot of technology I use here can be used for the faster 3D printer. So I'm gonna quickly go through the redstone and what were the limiting factors and how you could make it even faster. Um, so first, the first limiting factor is take out the uh, concrete powder out of a pillar and the fastest you could do this without problems like this is do it every 12 game ticks. So it takes approximately 12 game ticks um, before the next um, concrete powder block would turn into a falling block entity and hit the ground again and turn into a block again and then it could push it out. Um, so I made a 12 game tick cycle for the whole machine and yeah that was quite useful because a lot of other restrictions also work out perfectly with 12 game ticks and would be a lot harder to make it even faster. So now let's turn the machine on another time and this should already answer one of your favorite questions. Yes, I'm German. Um, so how does this work? So first of all, the items are getting sucked out, out of the double chest and transported into this dropper right here. And then as you can see, the items travel through the other droppers, which are on top of the item filter system very fast. Um, so every game tick, the item would travel one step further. Um, to get the one game tick difference, yeah, I had to, to use some piston magic. The only way to get a difference of a one game tick involves pistons. Then the item would travel over the item filter system and then the colors are selected. Here I have the delay um, yeah, to make up the difference in the item filter system. So basically it takes about uh, 0.8 seconds until the item arrives in the last uh, filter, that's why I have less delay here than at the beginning. In this way, every eight game tick, a new color is selected. Oh, yeah, we already done printing, as you can see, it worked out fine. <laughs> um, then the uh, blocks would fall down here, and then in the exact right timing, I push them against those glass blocks where they will just fall down. So I just had to figure out the timing of empirical testing. Uh, get the perfect timing for every spot and the items would just yeah, fall down here and then they transport transported further into the system right here. So let's turn this on once more. This time we have something really challenging. Um, so stripes of different colors basically alternate at each step and also between the right and the left side. So here you can see the real challenge. So all the items need to come in with a perfect delay between so the system yeah, can process them. And as you can see, the, yeah, the, items, the falling block entities get pushed over just in the right moment. Yep. 
So here they would just yeah, fall down. There's some water right here. Uh, once they fall down, they're turned into concrete immediately and then pushed over by this block. Yeah, uh, piston. Oh, here we have just a little server that detects uh, once the row is finished or filled up and those pistons push up the whole stuff. And done again. I'm quite content with the speed of this contraption and I think the only way to make this significantly faster would be to split up the content of the double chest with two hoppers and then basically build a second color selector and merge the blocks at the bottom again. But of course this would require almost double the effort and I don't think the effort is really justifiable. Um, so I think this is reasonable, everything beyond it is doable but yeah, it's even too much effort for me. I don't know if Mambo's 2D printer competition is still running because he published this video over 10 days ago, but at least I can use a lot of the technology for a faster 3D printer version I want to work on in the near future. As always, if you want to test out this contraption, you can check out the world aloud. Thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day, bye bye!